multiplication, the partial products method. We are going to learn in a series of videos three different ways that you can multiply large numbers. And this is the first one, the partial products method. Before we start that method, though, we have two things that we must remember. First, we have to remember the zero trick from our previous video. When we have numbers and one of them is a multiple of 10, we can remember to, um, we can think about it like forgetting the zero for a minute, multiplying the first two digits, so 8 times 4 is 32, and then adding the same number of zeros in the problem to the end of our product. Here's another example. I take 3 times 15 and get 45. My problem had two zeros, and so I put two zeros in my, in my answer. We're going to use this zeros trick in our um, in our partial products method. Also, you should think back um, when you first learned about multiplication, one of the ways that you can model multiplication is with the area model. And um, you can draw a rectangle to represent a multiplication problem. So this would be four rows of seven. And then when you show four rows of seven, the amount of squares that show up in that area is the um, answer to the multiplication problem. So we have four rows of seven and together that would make 28 blocks. Same here, eight rows of six would together make 48, a product of 48. So we're gonna start by showing the partial products method on a two by one digit problem. I have the problem 23 times four and we're gonna follow these steps down here. We're going to write the two-digit number in expanded form. So I took the number 23 and broke it into the tens piece and the ones piece. So 23 is 20 plus 3. And then we're just going to keep this digit, because we don't need to write it in expanded form, as the same. Now I'm going to multiply the ones digit by the ones digit. So that is here, 3, 4 times 3. And I'm going to write my product down there under the line. Multiply the ones digit by the tens digit. So it's going to be this ones digit by this tens digit, 4 times 20. I can do 4 times 2 is 8, and then add a 0, which is 80. Now it says add the two products, and we get 92. That is one way to solve this problem. The answer to this is 92. We can show that also with an area model. I have here shown 23 that I've broken up into an expanded form. Here's the 20, the tens part and here's the ones part, and then I'm going to show four rows of that, and I have just the ones. Then I do the problem four times, well actually we started with four times three, so four times three would make 12 little blocks, and then four times 20 would make 80, which makes a lot of sense. If these are your base 10 rods, think about one, two, three, four rods right there would be 40, Four more rods right there would be 40. 40 plus 40 is 80. And then I would add the 80 plus the 12 and get a sum of a 92. I can use the same method um, with a two digit by two digit problem. Again, I have written the directions down here, this time in a little bit simplified form, and we're going to show the same thing with an area model over here. So first, I'm going to write both numbers this time in expanded form. So 27 becomes 20 plus 7, and 14 becomes 10 plus 4. Now I'm going to multiply the 1s times the 1s digit. So I'm going to show those with lines. 4 times 7 is 28. And then I'm going to do also the 1 times 10 digit. This one times this one. 4 times 20 is 80. Using my 10s trick again our zeros trick. Now I'm going to do my tens times my ones. This tens down here. So 10 times 7 is 70. And I'm going to do my tens place number by this tens place number. Last step is 10 times 10. That would be this one times this one. 10 times 20. That would be a 2 in the front. 1 times 2 and then add two zeros makes 200. Then I need to add them all up. So I get 8 in the 1's place, these two together make 10, plus 7 is 17, I get 378 as my product to this problem here. You, I can show the same thing modeled over here in the area model. Here is that first step that I did, the 1's place, 4 times 7, it would make 28 little blocks. Next I did 4 times 20, 
which would be here. So this is 20 long and 4 tall would be 80. Next, I did 10 times 7. They're showing 7 little blocks this way, and it's um, 1 rod tall. So this would be like 10, I mean 7 rods in a row to make 70. Last I modeled 10 rows of 20, and we can see here that makes sense. If I had just done 10 rows of 10, that would stop right here, and it would make a flat, like in base 10 blocks, but it's 10 rows of 20, it's double of that, so it makes 200 uh, grids right there. 100 plus 100 is 200. And then I added all of those um, products up to get a um, final product of 378. Um, one little reminder, if you get confused about where, which to multiply by which, you might want to think about a bow tie. Um, I notice that when I sh draw the lines there, 1 times the 1's, 1 times the 10's, 10 times the 1, 10 times the 10's, it makes a bow tie. If you keep track of what you're multiplying <coughs> and you accidentally get any lines going horizontally, that's not going to help you make a bow tie, so you'll know that you've made a mistake and need to go back and make sure that you follow these steps as you multiply. <coughs> All right, next we can use this with a little bit harder problem, a three digit by one digit. Um, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to break your three digit number up into expanded form. 100 plus 20 plus 7. And then I'm going to multiply <coughs> this 5 times each of those places. So I modeled that here with base 10 blocks, this time not in a rectangle, just in pieces. So I'm going to do 5 times 7 is 35. Here are my five groups of 7, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. Then I'm going to do 5 groups of 20 would be 100. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And now I'm going to do 5 groups of 100 which would be 500, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and then I'm going to add them together and get 635. Finally, let's use the partial products uh, method to show a three digit by two digit problem. I have got broken up 654 into expanded form, 600 plus 50 plus 4, and 27 into 20 plus 7. Then I'm going to do each of those steps, multiplying the ones place times all of those, and then the tens place times all of those. 4 times 7 is 28. 5 times 7, I mean 7 times 50, first I do 7 times 5, is 35. Add 1, 0. 7 times 6 is 42. Add two zeros. So, so far I've done ones times ones, ones times tens, one times hundred. Have the, that step here. Now I'm going to go back and do the tens digit, the tens number times each of these places. So 20 times 4 is 80. 20 times 50 is 1,000. 2 times 5 is 10, add 2 more zeros. 20 times 600 is going to have a 12 and then 3 zeros. Alright, and when I add those up in the 1's column, I'm going to get an 8. In my 10's column, I'm going to put the 8 and the 2 together to make 10, plus 5 is 15, carry the 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 1 in the 10 thousandths place. So I got as a um, product 17,658. Because that was so many steps, there's a, a chance that I made a mistake. So I'm going to use estimation to rounding an estimation to see if I um, had a close answer. I have here, I rounded 7, 654 to 700 and I rounded 27 to 30, and I got a product of 21,000. Now you might be saying, those look pretty far off. Well, let's look at why. First of all, they, they, have the same, they go to the same um, place value, so they go all the way up to the 10,000s place, so that's an idea that they might be close. But notice this, 
When I rounded 654, I had to round up because this 5, but that's a big difference. 650 all the way up to 700, that's a big jump, a big round up. And then I rounded up again here, 27 went up to 30. So I rounded up on both of those, which means my estimated product is going to be higher. So it makes sense that this number would be a good deal higher than our actual answer. So I'm going to use this to say it's likely that my work here is still correct. Finally, I want you to use what we've um, learned on the partial products method uh, on the next video and look for what this has to do with our placeholder zero.